morning students so today we shall discuss about unit number 2 so name of the unit is electrochemical cells and corrosion so in this we have two important parts one is electrochemical cells the second part is corrosion so we will be discussing about electrochemical cells then we will correlate with these electrochemical cells with corrosion right so this electrochemical cells what are these electrochemical cells this is our first topic we are going to discuss by the way i am dr t vikram nagabhai i am working as a professor in the department of physical cells in mangalore is lara so unit number 2 that is electrochemical cells and corrosion the first part we have dealing is electrochemical cells in the electrochemical cells we are going to deal with these important topics the first topic is what is single electrode potential yes this is single electrode potential what is the single electrode potential this we have to understand the second important topic is what is electrochemical series and what are the uses of the electrochemical series this is our second concept the third concept is the reference electrodes so what are these reference electrodes and for example we are going to discuss two important electrodes first one is standard hydrogen electrode simply we will write as she which we have already learned in our previous classes we will have a detailed revision about the she the next one is the kalman electrode these two are the reference electrodes we are going to discuss until the here this we all have covered in our intermediate part but the new concepts can pertain to the engineering topic is the concentration cells and the construction and working of a glass electrode and how are we going to find out the ph ph what is ph the negative logarithm of h plus ion concentration in a solution is called as the ph of the solution so how are we going to find out the ph of the solution using glass electrode this Uh, we will see what are the details of glass electrode how it is being constructed what are its uses so we shall go for the next slide first one what is electrochemical cell so if you discuss about electrochemical cells they share two important types the first one is called as voltaic cell they are also called as the galvanic cell voltaic cell or galvanic cell so here we are going to produce current by spontaneous chemical reactions so here we are converting current we are producing current by using this voltaic cells so we are converting a spontaneous chemical reactions into electricity the so type of cells are called as voltaic cells they are also called as galvanic cells galvanic cells galvanic cells the second type is called as electrolytic cells so here they are non spontaneous the major difference is this is spontaneous and this is non spontaneous non spontaneous means it requires some input voltage in order that to react to take place so here we will be taking that as a dc power source so it requires some external source this is important point to be remembered so two cells voltaic cell second one is the electrolytic cell so now we are not going to discuss about this thing we are going to discuss about what is voltaic cell but both why are you discussing about electrolytic cells as it means both of them they come under the same category called as electrochemical cells so electrochemical cells they have two types so the first one is the galvanic cell here we produce current current is produced are generated and second one is electrolytic cells second one is electrolytic cells so in the electrolytic cells the current is utilized to create a reaction right so we shall go for the next slide so before going to this you should be very familiar with this important point as oxidation numbers Best example, since we have been learning in our eighth uh, class, seventh to eighth, when zinc is added to HCl, 
immediately you get some gas. So what gas is this? Here you can see the fumes here. So these fumes are hydrogen gas. So what's happening? So if you see here, the solid is zinc. This liquid is HCl. When zinc is added to HCl, we are getting hydrogen gas. How is this possible? This is the equation. So zinc reacts with H plus ion. Where is this H plus ion coming from? From HCl. So HCl gives rise to H plus plus Cl minus. And this H plus reacts to zinc. So zinc reacts this with H plus. It donates the electrons. So the oxidation number of zinc is zero. The oxidation number of H plus ion. Positive ion will be the charge of the ion. Negative ion will be the charge of its own ion. For neutral molecules, it is zero. This is thing you should remember. And you should recollect. From intermediate, we will be gaining this important knowledge of oxidation numbers. So zinc turned into Zn plus two. So from Zn, it changes the shape of Zn plus two. So oxidation number from zero, it has been transformed to plus two oxidation state. And next, uh, here it is in plus one oxidation state. So there are two H plus ions. So from plus one oxidation state, it has changed to zero because it is evolving as gas. This is a hydrogen gas. That's all. Zinc, when added to HCl, gives rise to ZnCl2 plus hydrogen gas. That is simple. Now, what is the inference of this? What is the inference of this means? In order to keep track of what loses electrons, this is important. Who is going to lose the electron and who is going to gain the electrons? That is what is important in order to assign the oxidation number. So, we assign the oxidation number in order to keep a track of what is gaining the electrons or losing the electron and which compound, which element or which atom is gaining the electrons. So, for example, in this, what I have been saying, zinc from 0, it has converted to plus 2. So, zinc is losing electrons. That's all. So, zinc loses 2 electrons. And it is forming ZN plus 2 ion. Very good. So, a species is reduced when it gains the electrons. But here, zinc lost. Then it is called as oxidized. So what is meant by oxidation? Increase in the oxidation state, that's all. If a species lose electrons, then it is oxidized. If a species gains electrons, it is reduced. That is what is written here. So a species is reduced when electrons are gained. So for example here, plus 1 oxidation state is that hydrogen H plus ion, it has converted into 0 hydrogen gas. Oxidation number 0. So here what happens? H plus gains an electron. Right? H plus gains the electrons. Therefore, H plus is reduced. So this is reduced. And this species is oxidized. This is important. This is all the basic concepts of electrochemistry. If you understand this important concept, then you can go for water electrochemical cells directly. Right? Now, what is reduced is the oxidizing agent, and what is oxidized is called as the reducing agent. So, what is oxidized is called as the reducing agent, and what is reduced is called as the oxidizing agent. Don't confuse between these two. These two are very simple and very clear, but they are always confuse you. But you should be very, very clear about this. Which gets reduced is called as oxidizing agent because it is giving electrons. Right? So an oxidizer which is oxidized is called as the reducing agent. So zinc H plus oxidizes zinc by taking electrons. Taking electrons. Clear? So we shall go to the next one. Now we'll come back to the original topic. What is cold dioxide? This is all the background work will be remembered in order to understand the electrochemical cell. What is a voltaic cell? This diagram I think you are familiar since the our seventh class. We are very easily remembering. So copper sulfate. This is copper sulfate. Right? 
this copper rod dipped in copper sulfate solution this is zinc rod dipped in zinc sulfate solution so this is zinc rod this is copper rod this is zinc sulfate solution when these are connected through salt bridge we get the voltage of 1.1 volt this is called as voltaic cell so what is this voltaic cell what is happening here so if we can use the energy what energy energy release either by gaining of electrons or by losing of electrons so if that energy if it can be utilized to do, do some work how can we do work with that energy means by the flow of electrons to an external device what is this external device what we have used here this is our multimeter a voltmeter is called as voltmeter so by passing these electrons through some other device we can utilize this energy to produce some work so that is why current has played uh, is still playing a major role so we call such setup as a voltaic cell so a voltaic cell means we will abbreviate this what we have discussed till now this is the voltaic cell it looks like this that is simple voltaic cell what we have discussed in the previous slide so this is very simple zinc rod dipped in zinc sulfate solution copper rod dipped in copper sulfate solution and they are externally connected using a wire ammeter internally connected by a salt bridge now we will see what is salt bridge also slowly now we will come back to engineering level this is called as a voltaic cell what is this voltaic cell so here we have taken as simply like that this is zinc sulfate instead of zinc sulfate we have written zinc nitride if you want you can write zinc sulfate also zn so4 or here we have taken as no3 minus so zn no3 twice zinc nitride right so the switch is here so zinc rod is dipped in zinc sulfate solution copper rod is dipped in copper sulfate solution right here it is instead of sulfate we have used the nitrate so this is copper nitrate this is zinc nitrate right they are externally connected through a voltmeter and internally connected to salt bridge this is called the salt bridge salt bridge so what happens here so the oxidation occurs at anode very clear what is the anode anode is always seated on the left hand side if i stand like this the left hand side is zinc so this is our anode so oxidation occurs at anode and reduction occurs at cathode this is important oxidation at anode reduction at cathode the flow of electrons always what happens it flows the electrons flows from anode towards the cathode the direction of flow of electrons is always from anode to cathode this is very very important externally through the wire what happens the flow of electrons this is the flow of electrons when the switch is on immediately the electrons starts flowing from the zinc rod to the copper rod through the external wire next another important point to be remembered is while moving this one right the electrons are starting moving from the zinc sulfate they are moving towards the copper rod right very nice what happens to the charge balance is the charge balanced no how is these electrons coming zinc by using two electrons it is converted into zn plus 2 ions and here these electrons are absorbed by copper and it is forming copper nitride cu plus 2 it is absorbing this two electrons and form copper here so copper is formed here and zinc is reduced to form zn plus 2 ions so zinc oxidized copper is reduced anode oxidation cathode reduction this thing is to be remembered now how would not be balanced and the flow of electrons would stop why if there is no salt bridge here what happens after some time there will be no current so once 
even one electron flows from anode to cathode, the charges in each beaker would not be balanced and the flow of electrons would stop. Right? If one electron, only one electron has moved from zinc towards the copper. Then also the reaction stops. So therefore, what should we use in order to continue the reaction to take place continuously? It's a YouTube, inverted YouTube shape uh, container, which is called as the salt bridge. This is called the salt bridge. So this is our salt bridge. This is all you have learnt in your intermediate, but still these are very the basics of our electrochemical cells and corrosion. So this chapter is at the basics. These basics you should always remember. So while representing, anode will be always on the left hand side, cathode will be always on the right hand side. So they are externally connected to a wire and internally connected to with a salt bridge. So the salt bridge, okay, right, where, what is there in the salt bridge? I said it is a U-tube or a U-shaped tube. In that U-shaped tube, we have the charge balances. Keep a salt solution. So what happens? Cations move towards the cathode. Always remember this point. Cations move towards cathode. Anions move towards anode. This is a U-shaped Right? It is in the U-shaped tube. So in this, what is there? The name itself indicates that it is some salt. Salt. What salt we will be taking generally? The sodium and the potassium salts. So generally we take sodium nitrate salt here, or sodium sulfate salt. Right? So why should we use the salt bridge to make the charges balanced? So if once the electrons start moving from zinc to copper. In order to revert back the electrons, we need to use the salt bridge here. This is the main important thing to be remembered. And now you should remember what is cathode and where is anode. So always cations move towards the cathode and anions move towards the anode. This is the important point to be remembered. Cations move towards the cathode and anions move towards the anode. This is up to here, we have discussed it. Now we will continue the next topic, next concept. What is the salt bridge? This is what we are discussing. So, in order to bridge these two half cells, we are using uh, an inverted U tube. This is an inverted U tube. This inverted U tube is called as the salt bridge. What is it uh, having? It is containing either KCl or KNO3, or even you can use NaNO3. Any salt which will be useful for connecting. So why, what is it doing? It acts as a bridge by connecting the two half cells. There are two half cells. You can see in this side here. Two half cells are there. And what is happening here? This is salt bridge he is connecting the two different cells. So this is a one half cell and this is another half cell. So the salt bridge bridges the gap between two different half cells. That is why it is called as the salt bridge. So bridge means it is bridging the gap between the two half cells. And why is it is called salt? Because here I have written here. You have the salts of either potassium or sodium. So electrolyte salts. An electrolyte. So what are the uses of the salt bridge? That you should be very familiar with. It is used to complete the electrolyte circuit. The electric circuit should be complete. The second one is it should prevent the mixing of the solutions of the two half cells. If the zinc sulfate solution and copper sulfate solution mix each other, what happens? According to the uh, rules, zinc displaces copper, that's all. So, there will be no electricity production. In order to enhance the production of electricity and prevent the mixing of the two solutions, this is important point, prevent the mixing. And next is, in order to help the maintain the electric neutrality, this is our main motto. Because I have been saying that if even one electron moves from here, one electron also, if you even one electron moves from G to copper, immediately the circuit is stopped. And if once there is no salt bridge, imagine that there is no salt bridge, then how can the electrons come back forever? Will they come back? No. Because always zinc acts as anode. Here it is very clearly written zinc is anode and copper is cathode. Zinc loses the electrons, two electrons, and copper accepts the two electrons. Right? So we shall go for the next concept.
What is the difference between a galvanic cell and an electrolytic cell? I told you that galvanic cell produces current. So chemical energy is converted into electric energy. That is called as a galvanic cell or simply we can also call it as a voltaic cell. Anything. What about the electrolytic cell? The reverse happens. Electrical energy is converted into chemical energy. They appear to be same, but there is a very major difference. Here, chemical energy is converted to electrical energy. These are useful as, for example, batteries. Then, this electrical energy is, used, is converted into the chemical energy. So, here, what is there where you have to use the match? Then, EMF should be used, right? So, in the, this is very important. We are going to study these galvanic cells. So, these five points should be remembered by all of you very carefully. The first one is chemical energy is converted into the Electrical energy. The second point is anode is always negatively charged. Very clearly remember anode will be negatively charged and cathode will be positively charged. But if you come to the electrolytic cell, it is reverse. Anode will be positive, cathode will be negative. So you should not confuse between these two. Get familiar with the galvanic cells and the voltaic cells. And galvanic cells are voltaic cells. So this is very important. Anode is for negative and cathode is positive. For example, if I write zinc and copper, so zinc is anode acid. It implies that this is negative in charge and copper will be always positively charged. Positive. Cathode is positive, anode is negative. Third point, salt bridge is required here. In order to, I have already told you here in this slide. To complete the electric circuit, to prevent the mixing of the solution and to help to maintain the electrical neutrality. So, salt bridge is required here. But here, salt bridge is not required. We are using, we are converting the electrical energy into chemical energy. So, there is no need of any salt bridge here. Next, this process is reversible. So, if I apply an external EMF, all the electrons which are flowing from zinc to copper will revert back and come back to zinc. So, electrons start going from copper to G. So, this is a reversible reaction and spontaneous. This is very important. Spontaneous means which it doesn't require any external force. Just if you dip it in a zinc rod in a zinc sulfate solution and copper rod in a copper sulfate solution and then connect externally using a copper wire and internally by a salt bridge, immediately the current flows even without any work done. This is a spontaneous process. But this is a irreversible, irreversible means if once the reaction is done, we cannot revert it back. That is irreversible. Another one is non-spontaneous, not spontaneous means non-spontaneous. So you should start it, you should put on the light switch in order to start the reaction to happen, electricity required. So, what similar then if it is clear that EMF of the cell will be always positive. EMF of the cell is positive means we are getting some current. EMF means electromotive force, current. So, current is positive here, but here EMF of the cell will be negative. Here the cell is negative, it implies that current is absorbed by the cell. That is what is here clearly written. Electrical energy is converted into chemical energy. In order to get the chemical energy, we require some electrical energy. That is very simple and direct. So, this is to be very importantly remembered and out of these two, we are going to study about this particular part that is called as the galvanic cells. What are galvanic cells? Electrochemistry deals with both the, both the topics, conversion of chemical to electrical and electrical to chemical, but in our subject, we are going to deal only mainly about the galvanic cells, right? So, we shall go for the next one. So, how can you show the cell, cell notation? Always, can I show the diagram, the big diagram which I have been showing here? If I say voltaic cell, can I put always a beaker and put zinc rod in zinc sulfate solution, copper rod in copper sulfate solution, connected by an external wire and internally by a salt bridge? So, this entire diagram should be remembered in a single line. So, that is called as cell notation. So, what is this cell notation? This. In the cell notation, always anode should be on the left. Anode. So I said zinc is anode. So zinc should be written on the left hand side. Zinc. So here you can see here zinc. And cathode should be written on the right hand side. So on the right hand side we have to write copper. 
because we have taken cathode as power. Next, electrons flow from the left to right. This is to be remembered clearly. Right? From left to right, electrons will be continuously flowing. Next, oxidation always takes place on the LHS, reduction on the RHS. So, zinc gets oxidized, so zinc converts into Zn plus 2, whereas Cu plus 2 converts into Cu. A single vertical line means it is an electrode. A double line means it is a solid. So, this is our cell notation. So, if you observe this, what is to be understood? Zinc is dipped in zinc sulfate solution and zinc is oxidized and it is acting as anode. On the right hand side, we have written copper. So, anode will be written always on the left hand side, whereas the cathode will be written on the right hand side. So, what is the single vertical line? It implies the electrode electrolyte boundary. So, a zinc rod is dipped in zinc sulfate solution and copper rod is dipped in copper sulfate solution. And what is this double line? This double line or double vertical line, we call them, it indicates the salt bridge. So, here we have it. This is the double vertical line. This is the salt bridge. And this part is anode half cell and this part is cathode half cell. So, cathode half cell will be on the right hand side whereas anode will be always on the left hand side. Electrons will flow from anode to cathode like this. So, this is all about cell notation. So, how to represent instead of drawing all the things, we will writing it in a single line like this. This is called as a cell notation. So, here I have shown the again the same thing. So, we shall go for the next one. What is this EMF? I said EMF is generated, current is produced. What is meant by EMF? EMF or electromotive force. EMF stands for electromotive force. So what is this electromotive force? It is at the difference of the potential which causes the flow of electrons. So electrons are flowing from left to right. That's what we have been discussing. So how are these electrons flowing? So here I said from zinc electrons are moving towards the copper. Yes. How are these flowing? What is the reason behind this flow? That reason is the difference of the potential. Right? Always the electrons flow from high potential towards the low potential. High potential to low potential. So the difference of the potential, right, which causes the flow of electrons from an electrode of a higher potential to an electrode of a lower potential is called as the EMF or electromotive force of the cell. So how can we calculate the EMF of the cell? Next question is the same thing. So how can we calculate e EMF of the cell is given by the notation E cell is equal to E cathode minus E anode. Cathode minus anode. So now remember which side we are writing the cathode? Cathode will be written on the right hand side. So E right minus E left. So, EMF of the cell may be represented as like this. See, so if you know the electrode potential of uh, anode and cathode by simply subtracting E cathode minus E anode, subtracting for anode cathode potential minus anode potential, we are going to get the E cell or EMF of the cell. So, E cell is the EMF of the cell, E cathode is the reduction potential of the right hand side electrode RHS. That is cathode, therefore we call it as cathode, E cathode. And E anode means reduction potential of the left hand side electrode, that is called anode. Therefore we call it as E anode, so this is anode. So this is all about EMF. Now we shall see the uh, main important topic, how can we calculate the EMF of the cathode and EMF of the cell we have discussed. Then you said you ca E cathode minus E anodes are here. How can you calculate E cathode and how can you calculate E anode? For that, we have to see an important definition called as single electrode potential. From here, our syllabus topic starts. Till now, I have given you a basic introduction about what is battery, what is cell, what is electrochemical cell, what are the galvanic cell, and what is a voltaic cell, and we have discussed about the EMF of a cell. Now, we will discuss how can we calculate the single electrode potential of a cell.
So what is meant by a single electron potential? First you should understand the meaning of it. The meaning is, if you take a metal rod, for example, take the zinc rod, we dip it in the zinc sulfate solution. And remember, the other one is a copper rod, so I dip it in copper sulfate solution. So, if a metal rod is dipped in its own salt solution, that is important. So, metal rod dipped in its salt, own salt. See, I am going write as own salt. Why is it own salt? You should not dip zinc rod in copper sulfate. A copper rod in zinc sulfate, which should dip only zinc rod in its own salt solution, then what happens? Some of the metal atoms they tend to lose electrons. If they lose electrons, that is called oxidation. Lose electrons, then it is called as oxidation. Or sometimes they try tend to accept electrons, that is called as reduction. Accept means reduction. This process of either oxidation or reduction. It depends upon the nature of the metal, right? And this process, what happens? Either giving of electrons, is losing of electrons, or accepting of electrons. This depends upon again the nature of the metal. Sir, why is always zinc giving? I said zinc is losing electrons. Zinc loses electrons. And copper gains electrons. Why? Copper is gaining. Why? Means it depends upon the nature of the metal. So zinc is always trying to give it. So in further in the further classes we will be understanding the nature of the metal. How does the nature of the metal depend whether it is a giving type or accepting type of metal? That is why how we will discuss in the next classes. Now if you see this, so in this process what happens? A small potential is developed between the metal atom and its corresponding ion. So this metal atom and corresponding ion, this is called as the single electrode potential. So the reason of all this, we can write what a single electrode potential means. A dynamic equilibrium between the metal ion, metal ion and the potential difference between the two is called as the electrode potential and it is measured in volts. So what are the units of uh, electrode potential? Volts. So according to IUPAC, there I said there are two types here I told you. Either to lose electrons or accept electrons. If they lose, we call it as oxidation. So, if uh, by losing electrons, if we do get developed potential, we call it as, as the oxidation potential. By accepting electrons, if it uh, develops potential, we call it as the reduction potential. So, which one should be taken, sir, means IUPAC has given us a clarification that uh, always the reduction potential should be taken. So, reduction potential itself is called as electrode potential. If I simply say the electrode potential of zinc is, means it implies that what am I talking about? We are talking about the reduction potential only. Until and unless it is specifically mentioned. If I say oxidation potential, for example, so reduction potential of, so reduction means Zn plus 2 is converted into Zn. Its value is minus 0 0.76 volts. 0 0.76 volts. If I write it as minus and said like this, this is reduction potential. You have to show it as minus. So, how can I find out uh, oxidation potential means? That is for writing E zinc slash Zn plus 2. It means that zinc is oxidized to Zn plus 2. It is oxidative to oxidation potential. It is simply reverse the sign. We have reversed the symbol. So reverse the sign. Minus becomes the plus. This is called oxidation potential. Oxidation potential. If I mention clearly the oxidation potential of zinc is plus 0 0.76 volts, then it is correct. If I simply say the electrode potential of zinc, then you should not say plus 0 0.76 volts, but you have to say minus 0 0.76 volts. Why? 
because the IUPAC has conventionally mentioned clearly that you have to take the reduction potential as the electrode potential unless it is specifically mentioned. So always remember electrode potential means reduction potential only. No need of again specifying again and again electrode potential of an electrode means it is its reduction potential. Clear? So we will go for the next topic. What is the standard electrode potential? Electrode potential means okay, right, you got it. Either oxidation by losing electron, or right, gaining electron, or accepting electrons, reducing potential. Now, what is this is standard electrode potential? It is the measure of the tendency of a metallic electrode by either losing electrons or gaining electrons. That what I have written here. Either to lose electrons or gain electrons, both is there. When when it is dipped into own salt solution, that is very important. If you write it clearly, in contact with its solution of its own salt. And what is the concentration of the salt solution? 1 molar concentration. And temperature 25 degrees centigrade. Here we have specified only two important terms. The concentration of the salt solution should be 1 molar and the temperature should be 25 degrees centigrade. Then it is called as standard electrode potential. And it is represented by the symbol E0, E0, here you can see here, E0, power of 0, E0, you call it as E0. If I simply write E, will E is equal to E0? No, because if I write electrode potential, it implies that we are not specifying the concentration and the temperature. If you specify the concentration and temperature clearly, then it is called a standard electrode potential. So, a simple definition and a very useful definition. So what is meant by standard electrode potential? It is the tendency of a metallic electrode either to lose electrons or gain electrons when, when it is placed in its own salt solution of 1 molar concentration and a temperature of 25 degree centigrade. So for example, you will see here E of Cu plus 2 slash Cu. See clearly, plus 2 is becoming 0. Is it oxidation or reduction? Reduction because oxidation number decreases. So it is reduction potential. So, reduction So, it will become E0 When will it become E0? The Cu plus 2 solution concentration should be, be equal to 1 molar concentration If Cu plus 2 concentration is 0 0.1 molar concentration Can I call it as a standard electrode potential? No For calling it standard electrode potential You should have two conditions. One is salt solution should be 1 molar concentration, temperature should be at 25 degree centigrade. And this E0 value, how can you find out this E0 sir means? It can be done experimentally by using a uh, SHE, stand, uh, standard hydrogen electrode. This we have discussed in our intermediate and again we have go to discuss this in detail. What is the standard hydrogen electrode? Simply we can call it as SHE. Standard hydrogen electrode she right now we have to discuss about the thing before going to that you should remember this concept also called as what is electrochemical series so what is this electrochemical series so we have got the electro potentials standard electro potentials of different metals we have number of metals when these metal rods are placed in its own salt solution then we are getting different types of values if I make these values in a chronological order, increasing order or decreasing order, that series is called as electrochemical series. So, like this. See here, this is an example of electrochemical series. I have taken only some uh, metals. So, for example, for lithium metal, if you see here, its value is uh, its uh, E0 value. See here very clearly E0. E0 means the standard electrode potential. E0 value is minus 0. 0, 0.03 volts lithium see for uh, gold plus 1.50 volts now say which one is going to be oxidized easily oxidation of the metal decreases slowly so this will be easily reactivity will be very high. So lithium Li plus 
takes the electron immediately to form lithium. Is it correct? No, the thing is reverse. Because it is in negative sign, I told you this is all reduction potentials. Reduction potential means always it will be in the reverse thing you should remember. So lithium always tries to lose electrons, whereas gold always tries to accept electrons. The tendency of losing electrons will be higher in the series and becomes lower chronologically and to the bottom. So now if you see object clearly, here we have the zinc. So zinc I told you, minus 0 0.76 volts. And I put in copper. Copper value is plus 0 0.34 volts. What does it mean? Copper always try to accept electrons. Zinc always tries to, yes. Zinc always tries to lose electrons. Because it is having negative electron potential. This series, we have increase, increasing order, we have uh, put it, this series is called as electro chemical series. What I have been explaining till now, I have will be consolidating in a definition group. So when the metals are the electrodes, they are arranged in an order of their increasing values of standard reduction potential. This is important line you should remember. When the metals are the electrodes, what you call them as? I have to be, uh, put them in increasing order of the standard reduction potentials on the hydrogen scale. This is also important. We have to use a hydrogen scale. Then that arrangement is called as electrochemical series. Simple definition. Very clear and simple. You should have the increasing values in order of their increasing values of standard reduction potential. A simply electrode potential you can call it as. That is order is called as electrochemical series. And the electrode potentials of different electrodes can be used by finding the SHE, I told you previously, standard hydrogen electrode. By using this, we have to find out the electrode potentials. So the potential of the hydrogen electrode, first you have to know the, what is the value of hydrogen electrode, its value is 0 volts. For SHE, E0 value. You should remember clearly this important point. Why is it taken as 0? I will explain again. SHE of SHE value E0 value is equal to plus 0 0.00 volts. So, so you can see here. See for hydrogen here 0 0.00 volts. So, based upon the hydrogen, if it is above that, it will easily lose electrons. If it is below this, then it will gain electrons. This is the concept. You should remember clearly. Right? So, the measured EMF itself is the standard electrode potential of the electrode because this is zero. I said E cell is equal to ERHS minus ELHS. By subtracting anything from zero from anything, you will get always the same value. Therefore, there is no confusion using SHE since the EMF of the, uh, sorry, since the SHE is having the standard electrode potential as 0 volts, whatever the answer you get, that itself is called the electro, uh, uh, standard reduction potential or simply electrode potential. That's all. So, for that we have shown you a table like this. So, this is the table. You have to remember the some values at least. For example, copper and zinc, because I have been using this zinc and copper always. So for zinc it is minus 0 0.76 volt. So it is a reduction potential. Next for uh, copper, we are having the plus 0 0.34 volt. It is also reduction potential. But can copper displace zinc or can zinc displace copper means that we have to understand this from this table only. Right? The metals. So what are the uses of this table? Or uh, say this table, which is, uh, we, instead of saying this table, we will call it as electrochemical series. What are the uses? We have to see the uses of electrochemical series. Why should we learn this series? That we will discuss now. You can find out the first point is you can find out the EMF of the cell. E cell is equal to E cathode minus E anode. So, for example, I have taken, see here, this one we will take. We have taken the zinc, ZN, yes, the same representation I am writing, 
Zn plus 2, double lines this indicates the salt bridge and then Cu plus 2, Cu. What is the standard electron potential of zinc minus 0 0.76 volts, right? For copper plus 0 0.34 volts. Now, this is a zinc copper battery or cell. EMF of the cell is equal to, uh, E cell is equal to, or E naught cell is equal to, E copper minus E zinc. This is our formula. See for copper, what is the value from this table? Copper, we have got plus 0 0.34 volts. Right here clearly, plus 0 0.34 volts. Minus, for zinc how much it is? Minus 0 0.76 volts. Minus 0 0.76. Already have minus. So again you write one more minus 0 0.76 volts. So now plus 0 0.34. Minus of minus. Plus 0 0.76. Add these two. You will get plus 1.1. .1 Hold. One zero otherwise. So we have calculated the EMF of zinc Zn plus two Cu plus two Cu. For this cell, EMF of the cell we got it as E naught is equal to plus one point one zero volts. So by using the electrochemical series, we are able to calculate the EMF of the cell. This is only I have written here. The first use of electrochemical series is, if you know the single electron potential of cathode and anode, you can easily calculate the EMF of the cell. How much current is going to be produced? EMF means electromotive force are simply called as current. Next. The relative tendency of a metal to ionize can be noted. So which metals are easily ionizable means the metals on the top are more easily ionized. So see we will go back to the series or we will go back to the next uh, thing. Here it is. So my question is whether lithium is going to ionize first or gold means Metals on the top always ionize fast. So lithium always try to be in Li plus state. So it is having minus 3.03 volts, which is very very low electrode potential. Therefore, this metal ionizes faster. When compared with even zinc, zinc is only having minus 0 0.16 volts. Is it clear? I have taken zinc sulfate solution and put a little amount of lithium. What happens? It displaces this zinc. That is our second point. The relative tendency of the metals to be ionized to ionize can be noted with the help of electrochemical series. How top metals are easily ionized into form solutions. So lithium easily dissolves in water, whereas gold is it dissolving? No. If it dissolves, I put a gold into my finger. Why tomorrow? If I put it in water, it will disappear. Is it happening? It's not happening. Why? Because in the electrochemical series, gold is having an electrode of plus 1.50 volts. If you do that amount of current, then only gold gets in dissolved. So hence, gold is called as noble metal. The next place we have silver. That is the reason why you see uh, high prices for gold and next for silver. Why silver? Why can't we use silver as a very, very precious metal means? Silver is having plus 0 0.80 volt. It can easily rust. So even corrosion happens to silver, but for uh, gold, plus 0 0.15 volts, which is very high potential, which cannot be easily oxidized or reduced. It is not having a tendency either to lose electrons or gain electrons. Therefore, gold is precious. Next to common, silver, and next to one is copper. And third point, the metals with the high negative electrode potentials are more prone to corrosion. Just now I was saying about corrosion. If that is more negative, means they undergo corrosion very fast. So, in these three, 
which is going to undergo corrosion first copper silver or gold from the top so it is on the top so copper is going to be corroded first that is the reason if you keep some uh, water in copper vessel copper easily corrodes silver also corrodes but in gold i didn't keep but still you try to keep in gold vessels you try to keep some water it is not going to prone to corrosion corrosion means conversion of the metal or degradation of the metal into its relative stable oxides or other stable compounds so we can the electrochemical series we have three uses now i have discussed it first one is you can find out the emf of the cell second one is the related reactivity at tendency to ionize top metals ionize faster third one is corrosion which metals are going to corrode fast the top metals are with less negative electrode potential less negative electrode potential values are less prone to corrosion means if it is more negative means more easily corroded so see here my question is whether lithium is going to undergo corrosion or aluminum both are having negative values only here minus 1.66 here minus 0.0 minus 3.03 which one will corrode fast lithium because it is having more negative value more negative value implies it undergoes corrosion fast right next the fourth point is metals which metals display hydrogen when placed in acid so generally the metals above hydrogen they display hydrogen for example zinc if you place in hcl it will uh, liberate hydrogen gas so for that also i have to see the table so zinc is having minus 0.76 so zinc if i put a zinc rod in hcl solution or sulfuric acid solution dilute solution hydrogen gas is liberated but if i keep a copper rod or a silver rod it doesn't liberate why because the hydrogen is having zero whereas copper is plus 0.34 and gold is plus 1.50 so above hydrogen they display hydrogen gas from acids so that also you can understand from this so this is a cell emf standard reduction potential so the larger the difference between the e reduction values and the larger the e cell the emf of the cell will be more if the reduction value the difference is very high so if you see here emf of the cell here the reduction potential value cathode value it is high more positive this is more negative then the emf of the cell also will be very very high so the difference from here to here if i take simultaneously pakka pakka rahe hote the emf of the cell the current output will be very very less next in a voltaic cell or the spontaneous reaction generally the cathode is more positive and the anode will be more negative So this is about a so negative and more positive. That's clear. So this is the formula. E cell is equal to E cathode minus E anode. This is what I have been saying. i am uh, summarizing all the things what i have been saying till now reduction and oxidation here always we will be taking the reduction potentials right and for calculating the emf of the cell we have to subtract rhs minus lhs e cathode minus e anode so the cell diagram is anode will be placed on the left hand side and cathode will be placed on the right hand side this is what you have to remember so till now i have been talking about the cell emf of a cell how are we going to represent the emf of the cell what is single electrode potential standard electrode potential and then we have come to the conclusion of emf of the cell and we have discussed about the series called as electrochemical series electro chemical series 
So in the electrochemical series, we have discussed the what are the uses of the electrochemical series. This is one of the most important topic to be understood in order to see that reduce the corrosion path.